Hi, this is Ralph, and I want to go over in this video how we can use some images and div borders in order to create some visual effects. Now, I've done a little bit of prep before I've turned on the recorder here. I've got an HTML file which is based off of my template, which I created in an earlier video. So I've got this file, I've changed the title, and let's see, let's look in the body for a second here. I do have a div with ID container. Notice the entire body section of my page is enclosed within this div, ID container. The only thing within my container is a headline one called red paint. And I'm going to use CSS to manipulate how this container is shaped and what its background image is. Now I've also referenced a style sheet. Notice that my hyper reference in my link tag is styles slash stylefile.css. This implies that my style file is within a subfolder called styles which it is. My style file is currently blank. I haven't done anything with that, but it's just a regular file with a .css extension. Now I've also grabbed an image that I can mess around with. I went over to Stock Exchange, okay, Stock Exchange, and I found a, uh, a graphic that I can use, and there's some licensing information, so I can use this uh, in marketing material, business cards, and letterheads, and multimedia presentations, and websites, and things like that. So check them out sometime. Stock Exchange is a wide collection of photos, graphics on there. And I usually just browse their uh, uh, most downloaded images and stuff like that. But there's a whole bunch of categories you can check out. So I've got this red, dripping red paint. And my goal is to use it as a background image that I can put some text on top of. So back over to my web page here. So pretty much a blank web page. I do have a div, ID container. And I've got this red paint headline one. And in fact, just so you can see what it looks like, let me jump over to my uh, browser here and I'll show you what my page looks like. So let me jump over to desktop and this of course is redpaint.html. There you go. This is my web page as it stands right now. All you can see of course is the head is that headline one. Now I'm gonna jump over to my style file. And I'm going to go ahead and start to create a couple rules. Now one of the first rules I think everybody should create is a reset rule. And this is going to set all margins to zero pixels and all padding to zero pixels. Now this is certainly not an essential CSS rule, but it's, it's one of the best tools you can use to get your pages looking consistent amongst all the big browsers out there, the Firefox, IE, Netscape, I'm sorry, not Netscape anymore, uh, Firefox, IE, um, Chrome, uh, Safari, Opera, and those kinds of things. So you're pretty much setting a default. You're saying, look, every element's going to have the exact same margin and padding. When I want to do something different, I'll specify that I want to do something different. The first thing I want to do is manipulate my container. Now, my div ID container needs to be referred to with the pound sign. Okay. So if you use an ID attribute, then your selector is going to have that pound sign in front of it, pound sign container. And I'm going to set its width to 900 pixels. I did this before I turned the recorder on, but I actually I took the dripping red paint from Stock Exchange and I used my image editor to make a, a version of it that was only 900 pixels wide. So my container is going to be 900 pixels wide. And just so you can kind of see what's going on, I'm going to put a thin border on here. Two pixels thick, solid black. Okay, So that's all I've done so far. I've reset all elements to a zero margin, zero padding. My container width is going to be 900 pixels and it has a thin black border. Now let me save this, jump back over to my browser, and hit refresh. And you can really see where this is happening. Um, I've got a uh, 1024 resolution at the moment, and you can see my container, 900 pixels wide, thin black border is right there. So far so good? All right. Now, let's jump back over to the editor here, and let me do a couple more things. I'd like to center horizontally this container on the page. To do that, I'm going to give it some margin, and I'm going to give it, let's see, I will do it this way. I'm going to do margin left auto. I'm going to do margin right auto. Semicolon. There we go. There are different uses of the margin CSS property. Um, if you just use the margin property, that's a shorthand property, and you can use different units of measurements to describe top, bottom, left, and right, or all four sides. 
So I'm specifically indicating I want the margin left to be automatic and I want the margin right to be automatic. And if these two margins are equal, it'll give the appearance of a centered container. Let me go ahead and hit save, go to my browser, and refresh, and there we go. So now that div is horizontally centered on the page. Now, next order of business is to put that red paint background in there. So back over to my style sheet, and I'll go to my container, and I'm going to do background image. Now for the background image property, the syntax is URL parentheses, and within these parentheses, opening and closing set of parentheses, within these, you're going to put the path to your image. Now this is going to be a little weird here. Let me go ahead and save this and minimize for a moment. And let me point out, here's my red paint.html file. Here's my images file. Okay, there's my red paint 900 that I want to use as a background. And here's my styles folder. I said file, there's my, it's my images folder. But here's my styles folder with my style file inside. So, I'm currently working within my styles folder on my style sheet and I need to get over to my images folder with my image file. So that means I'm going to have to go up the path and down into my images folder. Let's keep that in mind when I start to type in the CS or this path here. So my URL is going to be dot dot slash to go up one level in the folder structure, then over to my images folder slash and then over to my red paint 900.jpg file. So this is the path to my background image from my style file. Up and over to the images folder and to that particular file. I'm going to get that now I have that saved. Let me jump over to my browser and refresh. There we go. So now I have that red background. Now because my container isn't very tall, we don't really see the cool drippy paint effect. Normally, I don't like to set the heights for div containers and elements like that. I like the content to set the height. But so that we can really appreciate what's happening, I will go in here and let me just pop in a quick height of about uh, 500 pixels. Save that, back to the browser, refresh, and there we go. Now we can see that, okay, I do have that dripping red paint on there. And because it's a background image, it's really easy to have text and other elements on top of it. Okay. Now I don't really have an issue right here, but let me go ahead and uh, cause a problem. I'm going to change this height over to 1000 pixels tall. Save this, back to the browser, refresh. Okay. Now notice that my background image is starting to repeat or tile. Well, I don't really want that to happen for this particular background image. So I'm going to jump back over to my CSS, and in addition to my background image, I'm also going to put in the property background repeat no repeat. I don't want my background image to tile. Now I put this background repeat property right next to my background image property. You don't need to do that. I just like to have similar properties grouped together. I like my margin properties next to each other. I like my background properties grouped together and it is really bothering me that my height property is all the way down here and my width property is up there but like I said I normally don't use height and I'll probably end up deleting that in a few minutes okay so now that I have that background repeat no repeat I should be able to save this style file head back to my browser refresh and if I scroll down notice I don't get that red paint dripping repeating image there so this is a background image controlled by CSS. I use the background image property and the background repeat property. Okay. In the next part of this video, I'm going to go ahead and use some borders in order to add some other visual, visual elements to this web page.